after years and years of research, after dozens of drives, any type of drives, CD players, CD transports, CD-ROM, DVD, Blu-rays, anything that can spin a silver disc, I have finally found, apparently, my reference CD player. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay guys, as many of you, I suppose, who follow me know, have noticed that in the past years, I have been searching for an optimal solution for a quality reproduction of my CDs. I have my Oppo modified Audiocom signature for high res media like DVD audio, Blu-rays and things like that but I always wanted a high quality CD player or CD transport. I also did a dedicated video to CD transports. Here's a link. And I also got some vintage models. Before this channel started, I, I tried several, several CD players. It was almost as a fixation. I was just uh, obsessed with the finding, trying to find a, something that would have just taken my breath away and at the same time, just leave, leaving me with full quality sonic pleasure. And finally, this happened, I want to say it right from the start, with the ION CD35 Mark II. Now, <clears throat> this is a very expensive, as we will see, player. It's not a transport. I wanted to try the full package because there's lots of features. It's not just a transport, clearly. There's a DAC, a very high quality DAC. It is also a pre-amplifier. It has different kinds of uh, uses, which I'm probably not gonna use actually, but I did want it to test out the things, the, as I said, the ION concept for the CD player, because maybe I was hoping that the, CD, the, the, the DAC was, uh, of high, very high quality that could have somehow uh, matched or maybe surclass my May Holo Audio May. We'll get to that in a while. Okay, so let's now see the main features. Okay, of the CD player of II on the CD35 Mark II. Then we're gonna get a little deeper look on the physical characteristics. And afterwards, finally, I'm going to give you my take on different functions, sonics, good things, bad things, a little bit of everything. Okay, let's start. Now, first of all, I want to say how beautiful is this piece of gear. Actually, I always looked at Ion when I was a little younger thinking that maybe one day, who knows, I would have gotten that baby here with me because uh, there is something ab about that black with that chrome and that red that just makes me go crazy. That's why uh, I'm, I'm always going towards also those 90s type of CD players or CD transports with ha which had a, a few of those features. And this is something completely new, just been released like a few months ago, not that much in the end. I've been using it for some months now, so I have a good idea. It has been gone through a good burn-in, we could say. So I think that I, what am I about to disclose should be reliable. Okay, 
While I'm talking, you're going to see the main specs. I'm not going to go through those. I'll just put them here in display. But let's try to see a few of the features, the main features of this CD player, because it is a, an anomalous type of CD player. There, there's lots of stuff inside. Okay, uh, I've got to read. I have a, a list of a few things, even though there's much, much more, as you can imagine. So I invite you to go to the, the link. You're going to find the link in the video description directly to the web page, the, the, the manufacturer web page. Okay, so <clears throat> the first thing I want to say <clears throat> is that the, the core is a CD drive by Stream Unlimited based on a modified Sanyo mechanism. Now, what is the main characteristics of this? This is a vacuum tube CD player. Actually, it's my first. I never had it. And I wanted a true vacuum tube CD player, okay? Not just a few tubes here and there that barely influence the sound. No, 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 no. This is a full class A where you have uh, a very simple path of the signal they wanted to keep it as short as possible and there is no solid state no other nothing influencing the path that goes through the signal for the uh, vacuum tubes in fact they describe it as a pure class a triad vacuum tube output stage for single-ended and balanced operational signal path another in interesting aspect is that it has a slow startup with also a warm-up function all aspects that help to preserve the uh, the life of the tubes because at a certain point you're going to have to unscrew the baby and change them there is zero they declare zero feedback whatsoever of any kind at zero db once again the ultra short signal path which i have is something that i do like and i like that they're underlining it so much low output impedance in order to put long interconnects if needed remember it's also a preamp so they keep in mind this aspect uh, as i said before no solid state devices in the analog tube output no followers and buffers and no dc servo all aspects that help to keep the, the signal clean and faithful we could say at least according to them we have a separate analog output stage for the left and for the right channel. Separate, completely. The volume control is completely analog. It operates in an analog domain 100%. We have a fully balanced stack, fully balanced circuit inside, as you know, in terms of preamplification. Uh, and the DAC is 768 kilohertz per 32 bits and dsd all the way up to 256 mm, not top of the tops but decent absolutely decent um which is conducted delivered by an akm japan type of uh, delta sigma converter there are two filters optional at least one has to be engaged the first one is the uh, fast roll off they call it so you have a little more faster transient and the second one described as a little more analog a slow roll off i definitely like more <laughs> filter number one much more engaging and dynamic then um uh there's also very a lot of attention a lot of care on the power aspect we have uh independently dedicated power supplies for the input and output stage for the digital and for the analog aspects okay the circuits they are completely separated and that is a paramount aspect which i'm finding more and more in gear and that does deliver that does give results if you isolate if you truly separate the benefits are going to be there the, the, that nuances that quality that makes something special in respect to something good a lot a lot of stuff is good but exceptional it takes a lot of technology a lot of ingenious not only technology but just know how to do things and keep that signal as quiet and clean as possible and these are some procedures that greatly help that uh what else 
we have uh, the an optional PCM to DSD uh, converter. I mean, all signals can be converted to DSD. Very strange. In fact, it's optional, <coughs> which distinguishes the version, the signature version. I'm not. I don't think that's very useful actually i don't do not like uh, oversampling i know that's the trend but it actually by the ear i do think that oversampling is worse a lot of people would uh, swear that a, a dsd conversion is better it's good for the signal i don't like it as you know you know me pcm goes with pcm dsd goes with P dsd so as we said there are different versions we'll take a look afterwards more in detail when we see the rear and unfortunately let's go to the price and the price it's quite high especially in the u.s because this is an eu product it comes from it's made handmade in austria so we are around 10 grand ten thousand dollars yes i know it's a lot but if it's your definitive uh, cd player and perhaps you may rely on a, a there's also another version, the CD10. There's also the CD transport that costs much less. And there's the used market. So it's just good to keep in mind certain things, even that even that it maybe you can't afford it immediately. It's good to know that maybe that could be something good in the future. In Europe, clearly it costs less, and we're around eight grand in Euro, clearly. Eight thousand, even even sometimes less. I've seen it for less. It depends. It's still something brand new practically okay so now that we have seen a, a few of the of the different aspects let's take a look at the physical elements okay let's jump in okay guys here we are with our ion cd35 mark ii as you can see it has this beautiful black finish nicely brushed with these uh aluminum parts buttons as we're going to see, it's going to have a red display. Does it remind you of anything? Who said Mark Levinson? Yes, it does have that feel, uh, that sensation of Mark Levinson, especially the past uh, machines, the past decades. In any case, it has its own identity. It's an incredible craft machine. I mean, the materials, the feel, the, the solidity, the, the, the mass, everything as you can imagine and as you would expect is top notch okay so let's start turning on the unit and the button to turn it on is here below there we go as you can see it says ion or ion maybe in english you say that but it's austrian so it's probably ion there you go the warm up feature because it is a tube based cd player as we have understood as you can see it says here on the left far far left filter one okay and in fact it says no disc we'll go back to the display let's just finish the other features which are self-explanatory actually we have the main buttons which are very cool uh, i want to show you now i'm going to turn off all the lights just to show you the the effect okay that you have with a low light environment so let's turn off this you can see the buttons i have this red glow underneath so you can operate them in total darkness just like this and in, in even if in dim light it's easy just to use them plus clearly they're extremely cool okay as we said play and pause stop button back ahead the different tracks clearly the volume yes because this is as we said also a preamplifier and the inputs right here here on top we have these nice chrome grills which are used mainly to dissipate the heat generated by the vacuum tubes inside and in the center this beautiful top loading mechanism which uh, I mean if you have the room because clearly you can't put it below in a rack you have to put it on top just as a turntable it has an incredible fashion an incredible attraction I don't know it's so charismatic I love it I always did love this type of loading the clamp now is high quality much easier 
to have. It has, I don't, I don't know if you can see this. Let's see. It has this, uh, these nice little rubber here parts. So you can put it, for example, put it somewhere because a lot of times you're going to put your CDs inside and you don't know where to put this. That's something fundamental. And it has a, a magnetic mechanism, very simple, but it can see, it can freely rotate very easily. I mean, this is uh, uh, the evolution of their clamp. They, they used to have something more similar to, actually to Mark Levinson. Now they have this type, very, very nice, which closes the circuit and it starts immediately to play. Let's put something, like for example, this album, this best of a Vinicio Capossela, great Italian singer, just to give you an idea. And as you can see, it has a red type of filter here. So light cannot get inside, it cannot damage, it cannot interfere with the red book type of laser. So also there's a great care also in that way because a lot of people, including myself, like to see the CD rotating inside. It's something cool. Now you can barely see it, I must admit. It's nothing extremely eye-catching, but it's there and you can see it spin around. I think that is fantastic. As you can see here, it says just CD35, but it's the Mark II version. They, they just left it that way since it's the, the same model, but clearly completely different. I mean, they redone, redesigned a lot of parts, including the fact that this is a CD player only. The prior version was a Super Audio CD. And here in the display, the standard features are the number of tracks, the total, and as soon as you play, push play, it'll show you the first track clearly and the remaining time, but clearly you can decide what to do and the volume if you are decreasing it or reducing it. Clearly I'm keeping it at the minimum. You also have a very nice aluminum um, remote control. Very cool, full of functions. You can select it as an amp. Uh, um, as, a, uh, as a plain CD, all the different features you can imagine. You can dim also the display. You can select the optional PCM DSD conversion. You can regulate the, the, the balance level of the right and left channels. Uh, I mean, there, there's lots of features here, as you can imagine. It's complete features. Uh, the different filters, for example, the filters you have to activate them right from here, otherwise, you can't do it. I think the best filter is number one, uh, which has a little more fast roll off, while the number two, it says to be a little more analog like, well, the roll off is slower, but I think it's worse. It's less dynamic. And uh, I wouldn't go too much in depth, that's more than enough. Let's take a look behind now. So here is the rear, and already from the rear, I think we can understand that something quite interesting and special is going on. We don't have a normal CD player here, absolutely not. There's much, much more. Okay, now, first of all, I just wanna show you here, this part here. As you can see, it says standard, preamp, signature, and HF, standing for high fidelity edition. Now, these are the different uh, editions of this player. The standard and preamp actually are the same thing. I mean, they didn't do different ones. The, 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 the player always has a preamp. You can go to another version, which is the signature version, which has an optional, as we said, DSD, actually PCM to DSD converter, if you want, to convert everything to DSD. I find that absolutely redundant, but maybe it's magical. In any case, I decided not to find, not to explore that feature. Uh, and as you can see, you also have that special HF edition. The High Fidelity Edition has been released, produced only in 35 examples, and in fact, is just a luxury item. I mean, it is surely better. A lot of parts are better, but it does not clearly justify the 20 grand price, okay? Considering this is half the price, it, it, it's just something to, to make a special edition for, for some the types of people who want something uh, uh, completely different from the rest of the 
<laughs> of us all. So once again, there are surely some great um, features. For example, uh, Wojciech Pakula has one of them, actually of the prior version though, the CD35. And it's his reference, clearly. I mean, it is a top notch. He also reviewed this one, actually, and he said that this is just a notch below his, clearly. So this is a top reference by all means. In any case, let's explore the different aspects here. Okay, as you can see on the far left and right, you have the analog outputs, single-ended and balanced, XLR. So you can send the digital signal coming from your CD, but also, for example, other uh, digital inputs that are at that point converted inside the machine and sent out from this. Hence, once again, having a special balanced connection is going to be something, a winning point for a lot of people. And I under perfectly understand that. Instead, here we have, as you can see, analog in three inputs. Not bad, not bad. Why this? Why is this? Because it's also, as we said, a pre-amplifier. You control the volume and you can use this directly with your amplifier, the power amplifier. Okay, then we have the digital output, the coaxial. Now you know why I did that uh, high quality cable with Neotech bulk cable. Here is a link if you haven't seen that video. You have an array of digital inputs coaxial, AES, BNC. We also have I2S in the form of the RJ45 plug, clearly a USB. And then we have a dedicated series of ports exclusively practically for DSD, for the, for, uh, the clock, an external clock if you want, but also a, a subdivision in left and right channels plus another pl R, uh, RJ45 plug, which can also determine if it's PCM or DSD. Serious stuff, guys, for DSD buffs, absolutely. If you don't know what the, these plugs are, I recently did a guide on the different connectors, um, but also the standards, the interfaces in digital and analog balance and unbalance. So take a look, here is a link to that video. Next to that, we find these other little switches, which is something interesting, I think. Once again, here, we these are commands uh, mainly dictated if you're using this machine as a preamp. In fact, you can determine if you want an analog output via single-ended or XLR, which means it excludes one or the other. That's something good, that's something positive. Here, you can determine if the, uh, the unit goes in preamp mode. If you select the bottom like that, it's ready to send out via the analog outputs the signal to directly to your amplifier. No need of another preamplifier in the middle. And another interesting feature, very rare to find, is the gain because sometimes it's difficult according to um, the type of amplifier you're associating it to. If you have a high and low type of gain, you can have a little more play uh, in that, in, in the volume knob mainly, because there may be some issues and you don't have enough space, we could say, rotation to uh, correctly select the amount of volume you want. I suggest uh, if you're gonna use it that way, usually it's better just to put it at high. Max gain at that point then, the volume can, put, can be put lower with lower distortion okay guys on the sides i'm not going to show you there are just two other grills like this one for further ventilation because as i said there are some tubes and that's it okay guys uh, i'm not going to do any tests or environment captures or conversions it wouldn't give you a true idea maybe we could do an ambient capture but in a dedicated video okay just to see a few difference perhaps with other players or uh, simple players in order to see what can be picked up from an environmental recording. Now I just want to speak a little bit of the, the baby, what it's giving to me, to my life, the emotions that it's delivering. Because uh, I want to underline how more or less every time I bought a CD player, I had 
a, an upgrade or, and sometimes unfortunately a downgrade usually an upgrade in sound which made me made me go hmm good it's better yeah well nice i'm glad i did that never i did oh my goodness this sounds much better and never happened okay now finally with this cd player i did have this jump okay i didn't cry out uh, i didn't rip my hair off and crying it was a miracle my god it wasn't a mystic revelation but i think you can't get to a mystic revelation if you start already at a high quality because as you know i'm also using high quality dax which are gonna deliver already a very good sound so i'm not coming from my i don't know a lenovo cd rom i'm coming from as you know, you've seen my Marantz, the CD94, plus my Oppo. Uh, I also tested the Jay's Audio in my past videos. You're going to find a few links. Uh, one link here, let's say, for the J, but also the other videos I was mentioning here below in the video description. And uh, I just didn't have that perception, that emotional jump. Because I know a lot of gear has to burn in but I do need that bump in the beginning. If I don't get that bump, you're gone for me. And here, oh boy, if the bump was there, oh boy. Especially now that I'm testing it with a fantastic, I'm not gonna say what, not the brand, DAC upcoming in the, in the next videos, who is gonna really create probably the perfect red book, <laughs> the apotheosis, the, the 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 zenith of a CRE red book reproduction we could say probably in any case that's a future story already with the with the may the results were fabulous incredible this tight fast deep controlled bass liquid and silky nice and rich mid-range and absolutely zero spark no brightness on the top. I mean, just out of the box, it was top notch. Very enjoyable, highly engaging. And once again, I have to underline this. It is this analog uh, type of engagement that comes probably, I, I believe, from the tubes. I mean, that's the only explanation because uh, the difference, that harshness that you do find in CD reproduction was just practically gone there is always that slight unrealism that slight i don't know how to say it digital recreation of the image you just sense it i mean well maybe it's biased could be in any case i do think there is a clear distinction between a an analog reproduction something read from an analog media and something read from a digital media okay it has a way of uh, being reproduced that you sense it after a while clearly if you're just casual listener no no way in any case apart from that what i wanted to underline is that the internal DAC, the internal quality of the sound coming from the DAC was very good okay absolutely but compared to the may it was a clear there was a clear winner i mean the may was clearly the winner better on by all means nevertheless this was not too far pretty close i mean uh, as a standalone cd player probably one of the best and when you find the correct uh, recording a good quality recording oh my g it just explodes it's just overwhelming it's so good combined with it with a good quality deck unbelievable guys i mean i really starting to enjoy digital <laughs> finally finally when you're playing i would say normal slash bad recordings unfortunately as all resolving gear it's going to bring that up than a normal cd player so keep that in mind unfortunately it does not forgive bad quality recordings clearly for all these reasons i highly recommend not to get uh, the cd player or maybe you could go oriented to the lower model the cd10 
or much more reasonable go for the cdt it ain't cheap absolutely but the transport the cdt doesn't have all the rest of that uh, stuff the dac for example the preamplifier maybe it's something you're not going to use so it's it's, it doesn't make that much sense. In fact, if I could go back in time, maybe knowing exactly the sonics of the CDT as well, because I don't know how that sounds, maybe I would have gotten the CDT. Nevertheless, it's not just a matter of presence or absence of components, okay? Clearly, this is the top of their uh, line, the CD35 Mark II. I mean, all the components inside the capacitors, the resistors, the, the, the mechanism, the damping, the feet, the wires, um, the tubes, the, 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 diff the PCB, everything is top grade, okay? Top grade and put together by hand and checked, controlled. I mean, all of this is part of a top of the line process and the, C and the CDT isn't at that level. So once again, I don't know how that sounds. I also want to underline an important aspect that this version is completely CD, Red Book, okay? Totally dedicated to CD. While the prior version, the CD34 35 Mark I, was a super audio CD. But as the engineer who is producing, creating these, de designing these, said, declared, uh, if you put a CD and a Super Audio CD, there are going to be compromises on both sides. If you really want the top of the tops in CD reproduction, classic good old Red Book, it has to be a dedicated player. That's why they decided to do this. This type and dedicated just to CD. And I agree. I fully agree. Absolutely. Okay, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. A little long video. Please leave your comments on ION models if you know any or other CD models that are upcoming or that you just received, vintage models. We are all very interested because the sonics are so different and I think it's very interesting and, and fun to discover the different characteristics. Thank you again for watching and remember that music is born analog. Well guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.